What is Rococo? Are Rococo pieces an investment? How to distinguish them among the sea of antiques? And why are they one of the most valuable items in the antique market? Known to be the final expression of the Baroque movement, the Rococo style began in France in the beginning of the 17th century as a form of rejection of the more formal and geometric Louis XIV style. Not exactly labeled as a movement of its own, due to the fact that it borrows so many attributions from its predecessor, however, Rococo definitely set a tone and marked history as we know it. The Rococo age occupied most of the 18th century, and the clear distinction it has from the Baroque style is the partial abandonment of symmetry. One could say that Rococo is Baroque gone mad. The amount of artistry that it took to create these pieces is what sets its value in the market. The style promoted a more organic design, and it was composed of graceful lines and curves that appear to have no rhyme or reason, but somehow managed to capture the eye of the beholder with its unpredictable shapes and beauty. In a world where the natural inclination is to find beauty in symmetry, it took a very special mind to translate beauty in an asymmetrical form, and once executed, the results of such beauty felt almost alienesque. Besides a lot of floral and very heavy sea-inspired ornamentations, it also borrowed huge inspiration from Chinese and Japanese motifs. One can see occasional dragons cascading from the walls among the brilliant madness of stoko ornamentations, a true shrine of human ingenuity and creativity with no restraints. Another distinction between Baroque and Rococo is the colors often picked in the style was more cheerful and romantic in comparison to Baroque that had a more severe tone. A good film that helps one see these distinctions is the live-action film of Beauty and the Beast. Whenever we take a glimpse of the side of the palace where the beast lives, we can see the color palette and severity of the Baroque style, but when we're taken to the ball and bells room, we can start seeing the beautiful stoko accents on the walls and light pastels that are known to be Rococo. Warm pastel, creams, pearl grays, and very light blues were often used to achieve the desired look at the time. In this scene, we can see the dragons mix along the ornamentation of the staircase, and when we are introduced to the ballroom, we can also see in the walls the more organic flow of the stoko design and sconces. The creativity poured on each detail truly captures one's attention to the point that it becomes overwhelming. In order to find balance, one is almost forced to accept the space as a whole, rather than trying to break down each aspect of it. The style traveled through Europe, and each country had its own interpretation and execution of such. In France, where it originated, it was used particularly in salons, a type of room used to entertain. The characteristic of French Rococo included exceptional artistry, especially in the complex frames made for mirrors and paintings, which were sculpted in plaster and often gilded. The use of leaves, vines, and flowers intertwined in complex designs were also very prominent. One can say that the French interpretation of Rococo was one of the most subdued of the bunch. Even though the ornamentation was excessive, it shied in comparison with other European countries. When it comes to shopping for these pieces, there is a very clear distinction between them and other antiques. Often mistaken with Baroque pieces, it takes a very trained eye to spot them among the rest. Luckily, there are a few key features that can help one make the right decision. One of the easiest features to keep in mind when making your selection is that structure is often not accepted in the style. From bedside tables to armoires, desks, and chairs, the simple square form was often avoided at all costs, and when it was embraced, they made sure to break its sharp edges with more ornate accents to promote that organic and nature-inspired flow that they seeked. Asymmetrical detailing is also key when it comes to the style. Often you will see carvings that are not perfect one side to the other, and at times you will see pieces that have absolutely no connection with symmetry at all. They look mad and otherworldly, and that's what makes them so distinctive and desirable. The beauty of Rococo is its contrasting variants. It took a very methodical process to achieve what seems to be a very natural look. A well-executed Rococo space almost feels like it was nature taking its course. It's free and flowy, but the process to make that happen is far from it. Hours after hours focusing on detailings while still being able to see beyond those details and not lose the vision of the greater picture is more than just commandable. 
In our modern times, trying to recreate an original Rococo space can be proven challenging because the original techniques are no longer used. However, the beauty of antique shopping is that these pieces came from this time period and are true to their construction. One may not want to decorate their home as an 1800 French aristocratic residency, although there are few who may because they have deep appreciation for the style, but the beauty of antique shopping in general is that it can be mixed with more contemporary decor. When done correctly, it truly creates an elevated space that not only reflects one's understanding of interior design in general, but also showcases that your taste is not bounded by premeditated rules, but by the art of experimentation. Through such art is how Rococo came to be, so it only feels right to progress to future discoveries while taking a dive into past ones. Regardless of what route you decide to take, Rococo was a period of human brilliance at its finest, therefore it feels more than just an honor to possess a piece of such times. Here at Visual Ethics, we explore the ethics of style and good taste. Make sure to subscribe and to check out these videos for more.